when this country enters into a treaty with another country, the president signs it, it's approved by the United States Senate, it becomes United States law and it becomes the supreme law of the land. So I'm not sure exactly what state question 755 or Representative Kern's issue is going to be right. when an Oklahoma corporation doing business with a German corporation and there's some kind of commercial you know, uh, dispute, a breach of contract or whatever, and a treaty comes into play to be interpreted, and that treaty implies and encodes <coughs> some German law, mm -hmm. which now is a part of the deal, I guess the Oklahoma judge is not supposed to, is not supposed to recognize it or enforce it or whatever. Well, he, would, he or she would then be in violation of the oath he or she took when he or she took office to uphold the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution. Now, I mean, it it doesn't take it doesn't take a first year law student to work through these problems. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I'm not really sure. Get back to your question about what they were thinking, but I think it goes back to what Manier is thinking. Right. There's no effort here to protect against anything real. There's no specter out there. There's no substantive concern. This is this is a power grab. Of course, that's what politics is, is a power grab. But here, what they're doing, it they're doing it by demonizing a whole group of people based upon their national origin, based upon their race, and based upon their religious faith. And that's what makes it unconstitutional, and that's what makes it un-American. And if we, don't, if we don't fight it here, then today it's the Muslims, tomorrow, who knows who it may be. Iman? I just want to uh, uh, bring some simple terms. Um, how that would affect me personally, uh, banning international law and so on and so forth, people don't realize that if somebody's married in Canada, mm -hmm. um, their marriage license might be no longer valid. Mm -hmm. uh, the point we argued is, as Muslims, uh, uh, when somebody passes away, they would write a will. And the will, most of the time, is based on Islamic law. Um, Half of my, if I want half my uh, inheritance to go to my wife, one third to my children, and so on and so forth. It's it's a very, um, uh, um, it's it's a formula that has been pre predetermined, and before we could, we were be able to do that and write our will according to Islamic law, which is a proportion according to what the Islamic law have said. Now, if we are to file that uh, will with the state of Oklahoma, the judge have no choice but to carry our will. But if that law passes, uh, banning Sharia law, so anything that's based on Sharia law, including my will, will be no longer valid. That's on an individual level. Sure. Um, uh, and, 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 and measure many things, marriages that is done in the mosque by, by the imam. Um, uh, I, I even argued, can I be, um, I'm, I'm an expert witness on many cases. Can the judge even listen to me now, uh, since I am a Muslim or I'm an imam? It opens a can of worms that is that is unbelievably going to be uh, uh, costly to co to to to, to uh, um, taxpayers. Uh, at the same time, it really infringes on individual uh, uh, rights per se. Every individual rights per se, and and, and Muslims in 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 uh, in particular, because it did name. Uh, a holy prophet in the in the 755 hold, uh, named Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It did name Islam. It did name our holy book. And I don't believe there was any religion ever been attacked or a, an amendment against any religion was put with those premises on it. So, uh, in simple terms, really, it's saying that you could leave your will any way you like it, but I can't simply because your you, your faith is different than my faith, and that is. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but this is a direct violation of the First Amendment, including mentioning a holy, a holy man by name, a holy scripture by name, and, and the name of my faith by name. That is, that is very uh, uh, dehumanizing and demonizing. And I think oh, some good points that were just brought up is in an attempt to demonize and harm the Muslim community, in effect, they're actually harming the entire Oklahoma community. Uh, the ban on international and foreign laws. I mean, this is uh, a business's right to enter into a contract. We have a number thousands of international companies that have operations in Oklahoma and thousands of Oklahoma businesses that have international operations. Uh, all you have to do is ask yourself what international company would want to invest in a state that would find an international agreement or contract that is unenforceable. 
-hmm. No one's going to want to invest in the state. So in an attempt to combat a non-existent threat, what we've had is politicians create real and actual threats to our state. And, and those politicians, by the way, I might add, made it very clear to the media their, their motive behind st mm -hmm. State Question 755. Mm -hmm. And they did mention the growth of Islam and, and the threat of Islamization of the state of Oklahoma, where we are less than 1% of the state population. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they made it very clear on, on many, many uh, media outlets uh, that their intention behind that law um, is, is to prevent um, some form of a Muslim takeover of the state legislation or so on and so forth, which, which brings us back to the politics of fear.